السلام علیکم نعمت و زحمت کا باعث ہے موبائل اے پسر یہ موبائل یہ موبائل بھی خدا کی ایک نعمت ہے جناب کال میسیج نیٹ واٹس اپ فیس بک ہے لا جواب کال میسیج نیٹ واٹس اپ فیس بک ہے لا جواب اس کا استعمال بالکل ٹھیک کرنا چاہیے اس کا استعمال بالکل ٹھیک کرنا چاہیے معصیت کی راہ پہ ہرگز نہ چلنا چاہیے معصیت یعنی گناہ سن سن کے راستے پر ہرگز نہ چلنا چاہیے ہے برا معصیت اور گناہ کا آخری انجام ہوتا ہے برا یاد رکھو یہ نصیحت ہے ہماری بے خطا یاد رکھو یہ نصیحت ہے ہماری بے خطا جو غلط کرتے ہیں استعمال اس کا اے فتح جو غلط کرتے ہیں اس کا استعمال اے فتح فتح مال اے فتح بل یقین کرتود سے اپنے وہ ہوتے ہیں فنا بل یقین کرتود سے اپنے وہ ہوتے ہیں فنا یہ موبائل آگ کے مانند ہے یاران پاک آگ کے مانند ہے یاران پاک لطف پاؤ پا کے گھر اپنا جلا کے کر دو خاک اس میں لطف تو پاؤ اور پا کر پھر اپنا گھر جلا کے کر دو خاک سب اس میں پھنس گئی ہیں ایسے پھنس گئی ہیں کہ گھر خاک یعنی وہ جل کر راکھ جو اشز ہوتی ہیں وہ اشز کی طرح سے ہو رہے ہیں گھر یہ آگ کے مانند ہے آگ جلاتی ہے تو یہ موبائل بھی ہمارے گھروں کو جلا رہا ہے آگ لگا رہا ہے اور ہمارے گھر اس راکھ اور اشز کی طرح ہو رہے ہیں لذت و شہوت پڑی رہ جائیں گی دنیا میں یار یہ میرے یار اور دوست لذت اور شہوت گی دنیا میں یار دین داری اور دین داری اور نیکی کاری فقط ہے پائے دار بے ضرورت نہ کبھی مس کال دینی چاہیے بے ضرورت نہ کبھی مس کال دینی چاہیے وقت راحت کال بھی ہرگز نہ کرنا چاہیے سامنے والے کا آرام کا وقت ہو اس وقت بھی کال نہیں کرنا چاہیے اور بے ضرورت تو مس کال دینا ہی نہیں چاہیے تو بیا ضرورت مس کال نہیں دینی چاہیے اور سامنے والے کی راحت کے وقت بھی ہرگز کال نہ کرنا چاہیے سیدھی سادی کول ہے اپنی موبائل پر لگا گانے یا سنگی تو بےحودہ نہ تو اس پر بجا سیدھا سادہ رنگ ٹون اس پر رکھو اس پر گانے کا رنگ ٹون بےحودہ چیزوں کا رنگ ٹون اس پر مت رکھو نہ اذان آیات قرآنی کا اس پر یوز کر اذان اور آیات قرآنی کا بھی انٹرنیٹ پر یوز نہ کر نہ اذان آیات قرآنی کا اس پر یوز کر احترام دین کی جانب نظر مرکوز کر احترام دین کی جانب نظر مرکوز کر تمہاری نظر جمی ہونی چاہیے سیٹ ہونی چاہیے احترام دین کے اوپر احترام قرآن کے اوپر قرآن اور اذان یوز اور ابیوز کے لیے نہیں ہے تو اپنا رنگ ٹون اور اپنا الارم یہ قرآن اور اذان سے نہیں رکھنا چاہیے سمپل سادہ سی رنگ رکھنی چاہیے نیک مجلس اور مسجد میں سوئچ آف رکھ نیک مسجد نیک مجلس اور مسجد میں سوئچ آف رکھ خالق ہر دو جہاں کا کچھ تو پیارے خوف رکھ خالق خالق ہر دو جہاں کا کچھ تو پیارے خوف رکھ اللہ کا تو کچھ خوف رکھ کہ مسجد میں بھی بند نہیں کرتا نیک مجلس میں بھی بند نہیں کرتا نیک مجلس اور مسجد میں سوئچ آف رکھ خالق ہر دو جہاں کا کچھ تو پیارے خوف رکھ راہ میں گاڑی چلاتے فون مت سن اے پسر راہ میں گاڑی چلاتے ڈرائیونگ کرتے ہوئے مت سن اے پسر پسر کے معنی بیٹے راہ میں گاری چلاتے فون مت سن اے پسر اس طرح کے حادثوں کی خوب ملتی ہے خبر اس طرح کے حادثوں کی ایکسیڈنٹس کی خوب ملتی ہے خبر ہے دعائے خیر کا طالب تمہارا یہ ظفر ظفر شاعر ہے فنش کر رہا ہے اپنی شاعری تو اپنا نام لکھ رہا ہے ہے دعائے خیر کا طالب تمہارا یہ ظفر اے میرے احباب اے میرے احباب واٹس اپ اے رفیقان سفر اے میرے احباب واٹس اپ اے رفیقان سفر میں تمہارے لیے دعائے خیر کا طالب ہوں اور یہ ایک نصیحت کر رہا ہوں یہ موبائل بھی خدا کی ایک نعمت ہے جناب کال میسیج نیٹ واٹس اپ فیس بک 
ہے لا جواب اس کا استعمال بالکل ٹھیک کرنا چاہیے معصیت کی راہ پر ہرگز نہ چلنا چاہیے معصیت کا آخری انجام ہوتا ہے برا یاد رکھو یہ نصیحت ہے ہماری بے خطا اللہ پاک ہمیں عمل کی توفیق عطا فرمائے رسپیکٹڈ ایلڈرز برادرز فرینڈز ٹوڈیز پروگرام واز ٹو بی اباؤٹ انادر سبجیکٹ مولانا مبارک صاحب کالڈ می مولانا صاحب پروگرام کرنا ہے ویلنٹائن کے اوپر میں نے کہا یار ویلنٹائن ڈے میں تو میں یہاں نہیں ہوں باہر ہوں مولانا صاحب نے فرمایا اس سے اگلی ویک کر لو میں نے کہا ہاں اس سے اگلی ویک کر لیں گے ویسے تو میسیج ہی دینا ہے اب یہ ویلنٹائن کیا ہے بیلن ٹائم ہے عورتیں بیلن سے مارتی ہیں مردوں کو اللہ بچائے تو بتو بس تخیر اللہ سو ویلنٹائن ڈے نیکسٹ ویک سنڈے فورٹینتھ فیبروری اینڈ واٹ ہیپنز آن ویلنٹائن ڈے آئی ڈونٹ نیڈ ٹو ٹیل یو زینا غلط سلط فرینڈ شپ الیسڈ ریلیشن شپ فرینڈز فرینڈ شپ اور کیا گفٹ اور روزز اور چاکلیٹ اور کالج یونی والے ایک دوسرے کے یہاں دوڑنا ایک دوسرے کی گود میں جا کے بیٹھ جانا اور ٹریفٹ سینٹر گھومنے کے لیے جانا ٹیک اوے ریسٹورینٹ شادی سے پہلے ابھی تو کچھ شادی بھی نہیں ہوئی ہے کچھ نکاح بھی نہیں کچھ دیکھا دیکھی دوسروں کی نقالی اور نامہ اس کا ہے محبت وی ار ان لو بھائی یہ لو بو کچھ نہیں ہوتا یہ لسٹ ہوتا ہے یہ ریئل لو پیپل ڈونٹ نو وٹ ریئل لو از پرانے زمانے میں ریئل لو ہوا کرتا تھا اولڈن ڈیز زمانے جاہلیت ابن القیم رحمۃ اللہ علیہ نائس بک کو روزۃ المحدین دا گارڈن آف دا لورس اس میں ہی از ٹاکس اباؤٹ دا پیور لو لو آف اللہ رسول اینڈ ہی از آلسو ٹاکس اباؤٹ دس ادر لو سو ہی گوز آن ٹو سم گریٹ ڈیٹیل ہی مینشنز دس کوٹ فرام اے بیڈوین عرابی سو ون آسٹ ہیم واٹ از لو ان یور بیڈوین لائف ان ولیجز اینڈ اس ایٹ لو از وین اے پرسن لائک سم ون دے سیٹ ٹو گیدر ان دا مون لائٹ ٹاک نائس ٹاک کانورسیشن چیٹنگ and then he goes his way she goes her way that's it and express your feelings just talk about your looks so that's it and then the arab he asked and what is love in your terms well love in our terms is just hugging and kissing and jumping and doing everything till the end so the abedwin said toba 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 this is a person who wants children he's not in love hada talibu walad wa laysa bi muhib This is someone who's after children. Toba, toba. We would never do that type of stuff to someone we love. And he said that as soon as that sexual act takes place, the love is corrupted. It's finished. This is what we believe. That love stays until that act takes place. Before that is love. But after that, love goes away. That is lust. You're only, he is only after her and she is only after him to fulfill desires. Once that desire and that, that fizz dies down, then love also goes away like the fizz of the Coca-Cola. Soda water josh. It was finished. So in the olden days, this is what they believed love to be. This was the happen. Now, Islam came and Islam said, This type of love and muhabbat is also prohibited before marriage. After marriage, no problem. After nikah, you are halal for one another. But before nikah, you're not allowed to have this type of conversation, going around, sitting, talking, because it's harmful for your spiritual health. We have to remember, we don't just have our bodies. We have our hearts, we have our mind, we have our spirit, we have our soul. So we have, the human being is the name of the whole, whole, uh, whole comp- all, all components, not just of the body and not just of the carnal desire and shahwat. So keeping that in mind, we have to understand anything that harms our soul, our ruhaniyat, our spiritual sight. Allah and His Rasul know that. And this is why Allah and Rasul said that this is not good for you. Avoid it. Why is pork haram? If you go in a shop, you see there is beef and there is pork, they both look similar. But why does Allah say this is halal and this is haram? 
There is something wrong because that is, that is, that is harmful for our body and for our spiritual side. Because when you eat some meat, then the, the when, when you eat that meat, then the the, the, the act, the, you know, the, 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 the effects of not only body side, if you eat too much beef, your cholesterol goes high. And people get problem with piles and whatever. So this is from the bodily side. But similarly, it has uh, effect on the ruhani, spiritual side as well. So if you eat halal meat, pure halal with Bismillah Allahu Akbar, then it will, the halal morsel will go inside as well. Strengthen your ruhaniyat. And if you eat haram stuff, then it will be harmful, damage your ruhaniyat and your spiritual side. See, Allah Pak said, the, the habits of that animal which you eat, they could also come into you. The asarat, the bihayai, and the besharmi, and immodesty will also come into you. Allah Pak said, don't eat that pork, avoid it. It's harmful for your spiritual health. So, these type of relationships are also harmful for our spiritual side. So even though before Islam, you know, in the time of Jahiliya, the Bedouins, they used to have these types of interactions. But Islam said, no, before marriage, you should avoid it and stay away. Even if you do feel this, you know, love and likeness for someone, you have to control yourself. Like there were people who used to control themselves. This young man fell in love with some butcher's daughter because she used to go out, do some work for her father. So he used to see her. So one day her father sent her somewhere for something and, uh, you know, he followed her. And at one place, when she was alone, he, you know, expressed his love. He said, I love you. And she said, I know that. I have seen your movements, I have seen your whatever you do. And I love you more than what... And I also love you. However, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of Allah's khawf, I can't do it. So you propose to my father, if he, uh, you know, weds me to you, then okay, we'll stay together. Otherwise, I, I can't do anything wrong. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the young man said, subhanallah, a butcher's wife, she fears Allah so much. And she's, she's a girl. And I am a man. I should have more control over my nafs. Tawbah, tawbah, astaghfirullah. He did tawbah. And he said, I'm, not, I'm never going to do this type of harkat again. So in the cases when you understand, and that is where the iffat and pak damani, restraining your nafs and controlling your ego, abstaining from what is wrong, comes into effect. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, mentioned great reward and sawab for such young men who control themselves. Ibn al-Qayyim has narrated one hadith in there, although there is kalam in the sanad, but he's narrated it. Man ashiqa fakaffa thumma katam fakatama thumma mata mata shahidan. Whosoever falls in love, however he conceals his love, and he restrains himself, and he dies because of that, then he will die as a shaheed. Now, it means Allah will give him high rank because he controlled himself. He concealed his ishq with the other person. So because of that, Allah will give him so much. And there were cases when someone was in love and unable to, you know, get interaction with the other person, and he died. Because this ishq and love, it has a certain heat in the body. And when you talk to the person you love, you engage with them, and you talk to them, talk about them, then that heat is uh, taken out. But if, it doesn't, if it's not taken out, it stays inside, and it's bottled up, then it kills the person. And there are many cases of this type that a person was in love and then, you know, this happened that he died all of a sudden. Something happened and he couldn't take it and he died instantly there and then he gave the life. So, and so with regards to this iffat, Pak Damani, there are many, many ahadiths staying, abstaining. Example, the hadith of Sab'atun yuzilluhumullahu fi zillihi. Seven people under the shade of the arsh of Allah. One of them is, وَرَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُمْ رَأَتْنُ ذَاتُ مَنْصَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ 
a person who was invited for sin by a lady of beauty, of a high status in the society, but he said, Inni khafullah. I fear Allah, I can't do this. He will be called to one side. Just once in a lifetime, this happened. Only once. Only once he said, Inni khafullah. Sorry, I can't do it. And he left that place. He will be called to one side. Special shade of the arsh of Allah on the day of Qiyamah. You have heard the story of those three who were trapped in the cave. And they started dua. That, oh Allah, please help us and take us out of here. The first person said about khidmat of parents. I used to do khidmat of my parents. Because of that, remove this problem for us. The second person said, I had a cousin sister. I loved her. She loved me. And I loved her. However, I, 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 you know, I approached her. She refused. One day, she was in dire need. And uh, she came to me and said, please help me. I said, if you sleep with me, then I'll help you. And she agreed. She wanted a hundred dinars. I gathered from somewhere and I gave her the hundred dinars. And then when I was about to sleep with her, and the word says that when I sat between her legs and she closed her eyes and she said, Ittaqillah, Fear Allah and don't break the seal without true just right. So he said, when she said that, I stood up from there and I ran away. I said, I left her and I gave her the money as well. You can keep it. So at that critical moment, I feared you, O oh Allah, and I left and I gave her the money as well. So if I did that for your sake, only you and I know, if I did it for your sake, O oh Allah, then please remove this problem. And the, the rock which had blocked the entrance to the cave, it moved. And it moved and moved. So they could see the sun. And then it moved so much for after the third one that they were able to get out. Allah accepted that dua because of his uh, restraining and his, his iffat and pardamri and abstaining from the sin. So when you do get these types of moments in your school, college, uni, what you need to do is control yourself. Look now. You read La Hawl, Awzu Billahi Minash Shaitan al Rajeem a few times. Anything, any zikr of Allah, whatever, La ilaha illallah. Zikr of Allah, you know, shoots a missile on the brain of Shaitan. Shooting boogies. But there's a shooting with Bhagavad Shaitan. And then your waswasas will go, and then you can focus on your class, on your lesson. But don't fall into wrong friendship, wrong relationship. This is Valentine's Day's message. Now, this was supposed to be the program. During that, you know, I received some posters from somewhere about this alim giving a lecture on porn addiction and its harms. So I said to Sayyid Bhai, get this type of Esa Kuj program. Sayyid Bhai said, Mawlana Sahib, this is very direct. So, we have to keep it a little bit warm. So, they have kept it internet addiction. Let's go, I said, okay. So, now this, we have to think about this. There is addiction in this. And many of these sins of Valentine's Day and zina and fornication, adultery, porn viewing, and these types of things are effects of these Valentine's Day and whatever surrounds it and the programs and the movies, what we see on the telly, these are the things that instigate us. And shaitan uses us to sin through these things. Now, we want to understand this internet addiction. I was doing my research. Mashallah, internet is good as well because this research is from internet. You type on Google, you get everything. So it makes life easy for us, even for the speakers as well. So you use it for a good purpose? Alhamdulillah. So I was searching on there. And it says there on Wikipedia that there is this bimari called IAD. Internet Addiction Disorder. It's named. People do get this sickness and they fall ill into this addiction. And there are reasons for it and there are cures for it. It's mentioned, and people are making money out of it. There are many, plenty of counselors over there, 
and they say, this is the sickness, IAD. You have this, you have to come to us, you have to go through a therapy, and then you are cured from that addiction. So that bimari is called IAD. First, I got mixed up with IDA, Islamic Dawa Academy of Moulana Salim Dorat Sahib. Then I thought, no, 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 this is IAD. So I wrote it properly, I don't make mistake. IAD, Islamic Addiction Disorder, oh, sorry, Astaghfirullah, Internet Addiction Disorder. What is it? It's an impulse control disorder which does not involve use of an intoxicating drug. However, it is very similar to pathological gambling. Some internet users may develop an emotional attachment to online friends and activities they create on their computer screens. So you have your computer screen before you, you're on it all the time, and you go into this habit of staying on it all the time. Sometimes you create some friends on there or some activities on there, and you are always with them. Now, these days, computer card ko to gharme koi khulda hi nahi hai. Kyunke jeb mein computer hai. Ye itna bada computer hai, ye iPhone or Samsung or ye sab musibat. So ye isme sab puri internet isme hai. So you don't need to open the computer. So internet is on here. You develop that attachment with it. It says they may, the person who is addicted to this may socialize, exchange ideas through chat rooms and sites like WhatsApp. You have your own chat room, your friend circle. And just yesterday, WhatsApp have increased their capacity from 100 to 256. So now you can have 256 friends on your WhatsApp group. If you didn't know, that's an announcement, advertisement for WhatsApp. <laughs> so now you can increase your friends on WhatsApp groups. WhatsApp groups are used by, for good purposes as well. One Molana Saab, you know, teaches half his class. He's got a WhatsApp group of his half his class student. And he always stays, you know, on track with them. How much have you read? And tomorrow you got to read this much sabak. Any announcement, everything of Hafiz class, all on the WhatsApp group with Hafiz class. So you can use it for good purpose as well. Some spend endless hours researching on topics of interest. They have an interest into something and they just go on hours and hours into that topic, sometimes throughout the whole night. Like for example, Imam Mehdi, Dajjal. And they go on there and research and research Bermuda Triangle and this and Illuminati and Front, Democrat. And then the Imam is depressed. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. This young boy, you know, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He's a young man. And he's a very healthy, nice looking young boy, very skinny, frail. He's an electrician. He once phones me, Monasa, can I come and see you? I need five minutes. I said, okay. He came for five minutes, sat for an hour. And now, what was his problem? I, I got deep into his brain. And his problem was, he was staying till late at night on the internet. And going into this Imam Mehdi and this and that and the Jal and this system and that system. And he goes, blah, 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 blah. I said, bas kalla bo thaki gyo ho. Ketlu hampar vano. Kab tak sunu ga me tere ye bak, chhoad ab. Toh tera dimaag kharaab ho gaya hai. Ab a website pe jana, internet pe jana, ban karo. Go to sleep early. You have to go to work in the morning. Because he's self-employed, he gets up at Zohar time. And then goes for a little bit of work. I said, you should find a job and go to job nine o'clock and go to sleep early at 10 o'clock. So, this type of addiction is what happens. You go and research on these types of things which you like and you're on there and you're hooked to it for hours and hours. Some create blogs and this becomes like a journal available for viewing and commenting by all. So on that blog, they're always on it, checking out who's reading my blog, how many people have read it, and what's going on? How many comments? So they're on that blog all the time. And you know, all the time checking, checking, checking. And you know, trying to create more and more friends and more and more viewing and readership. Some use the internet connection for entry into a fantasy world. 
never connecting with real people. And he, some people use it, create a fantasy, world of fantasy. It's not real world, they don't have real friends. He's a lonely person. He's always lonely, he's a loner. And always sitting on the computer, even at school, college, uni, he has no friends. He's always into his own world. And then fantasy. Sometimes love, muhabbat with someone, the opposite gender, sex, and then this type of thing. And he's always into his own world. This happens with the internet addiction. What are the warning signs for internet addiction? Number one, preoccupation with the internet about previous activities or anticipation of future activities. When you are preoccupied with the internet and always thinking about the past, previous activities, or you are always waiting for future and always thinking, dream, day, thinking, thinking thoughts, then that means you have a problem of addiction. You are addicted because you are always thinking about the net, about your connection, about your WhatsApp, about your Facebook, about your Twitter, about your Instagram, about this, about that. Number two, feeling of restlessness, moodiness, depression when attempting to cut down on internet. Let's say after this program today, you feel like cutting down on your internet use. But then you feel restless. No, 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 no. You get some itching in your fingers and you want to go back on that mobile straight away. So this means that you've got some addiction problem because of your, you know, you are you finding it hard and struggling to get off it. So this means you have addiction. And sometimes if you, let's say, your mobile, uh, you know, becomes faulty. So you can't wait until you get it repaired. So you have to rush to the iPhone shop, I'm going to go today. And if he says, we have to keep it for a day or two, no, 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 I want it now. So this is a sign that you have an addiction with your internet. Repeated unsuccessful efforts to control its usage is another sign. You've tried in the past as well, but you were unsuccessful. This is a sign that you are addicted to. Number four, jeopardized or risked loss of job, relationship, educational career opportunities because of the internet. Many times you have jeopardized your career or you have lost your job, you have lost your relationship because of it. You must have read that WhatsApp clip which was going around. Divorce because of WhatsApp. The wife said, either you divorce the WhatsApp or divorce me. So the person said, okay, he tried for a few days, but then he couldn't let go of his WhatsApp. He was always on it, on it, on the WhatsApp, on the WhatsApp. So the wife said, you give me a divorce. And he divorced her. So he's married to his WhatsApp, not to his wife. Always on it. You must have heard of cases where there was divorce on the first night. Because they went on for a honeymoon. And on the honeymoon, he's on his WhatsApp and she's on his, her WhatsApp. So texting, 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 go to one place and that. You have no time for one another. It's going to end up in divorce. So if you have lost your relationship or jeopardized your relationship or risked your losing of job or, or, or some educational career or some, you have failed in your exams because of it, then this means that you have some addiction with the internet. Number five, lying to family or uh, you know, some of the counselors about involvement with internet. Your father asks you, your mother asks you, no, 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 I'm okay, I'm alright, I'm perfectly healthy. You're lying. And they think you're sleeping, but in, the, in reality, you're on the mobile, on the room, or on the computer, and you're, you know, just messing around, playing games, chatting, sending texts around. This lying habit is a sign that you are addicted to the internet. And finally, Using internet to escape from real problems. So you've got some real problems and you want to get it off your mind. So you just go on your mobile and you go into WhatsApp and this and that and blah, blah and Facebook. And you're not trying to sort the real thing out. So you're neglecting the real problem and you're going into this internet to release that tension. This is a sign that you are, you know, addicted to internet. Now, the effects of this addiction. First of all, people have personal problems because of internet addiction. 
secondly family problems thirdly academic problems fourthly financial problems many people don't look after their business their shop their business properly they just sit at the shop playing games watching videos sending text text messages the customers are coming and going but they're not paying any attention so the business falls down so uh, you know failure of this type financial problems occupational problems real life relationships are broken apart because of internet addiction also another effect of internet addiction is that the person wants to spend more time in solitary seclusion he wants to stay alone even if his mom or dad comes in the room he starts screaming that are you coming in my room for mom i don't want you here go and this is is trying to stay alone he doesn't want to know anybody and he doesn't want anybody to know him or her these are the effects of internet addiction also being awkward and in our islamic culture we will say the effects of internet addiction are neglecting our islamic duties first and foremost is salah a person who's addicted to internet will miss his salahs he's on the internet namaz time his father saying chalo beta masjid chalo go to masjid namaz no 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 and he'll find some excuse and uh, you know sneak out somehow to do what he is doing his game or whatever his activities or hobbies are so islamically you don't fulfill your duties properly reading the quran we are supposed to read the quran once we get internet addicted we can't read the quran i'm really telling you it affects everyone even us as well reading the quran our mutala our studies they suffer because of internet addiction one of my friends once i was talking to him and he says molana sahab ya mobile phone se bahut musibat hai wo roz alhamdulillah ek sipara padhta tha jhelti aaye musibat aayi ye maro the quran maro zaya the i used to read one juz of quran every day but since this mobile musibat has come i can't even read one sipara he's not half he is a doctor he's a friend of mine he's a doctor very nice he's you know he is maybe 50s 40s 50s a grown up mashallah very good doctor and he says morana sahab even you know i used to read regularly one sipara every day but since this mobile musibat i just don't get time cuz what's happened this and you just go on it for a few minutes and then you're on there for an hour and you don't know to what ki ko ki and then you know you want to go to sleep and you're having sleepless nights nice, restless so this is you know uh, the effects of uh, internet addiction also another effect of internet addiction is putting false profiles on the internet to draw attention creating a secret life of sin on social media so when you're addicted to it you make a false profile of yourself because you want attention from people and then you start chatting just the other day someone sent me this whatsapp clip from india in gujarati pati and patni husband and wife they were both chatting on facebook and they agreed to meet some place and they went there and they met with their husband and wife so he has his false profile with false name and she has her false profile with a false name but in reality they were both husband and wife and in home they're not talking to one another but then they're talking on a facebook 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 and then when they agree to meet so and so hotel i will wear such and such color clothes and you will be wearing such and such and when they come and they go at their it why it was been wife nikli so in gujarat someone sent it in gujarat newspaper so creating these types of false in fact someone sent me this whatsapp clip the other day that this girl says you know she was chatting on facebook with another girl and uh, they kept on chatting chatting they had a long friendship deep into the friendship and then they agreed to meet at one place when they went to meet there that person turned out to be a boy and he proposed to her and then they got married 
and uh, you, they had two kids and then he kicked her out because he's old habit he has he had so many other you know false profiles and he was talking chatting with other girls as well portraying himself as a girl so the other girl thinks that he is you know a girl but in reality he's a boy and he is talking in that manner with that false profile and luring girls to his friendship and he you know used this girl and they had two kids and then kicked her out so this is what happens with internet addiction also some activities which happen on internet gaming games always games 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 blogging emailing social activities excessive use pornography pornography is the sin of the eye uh, here is the sin of the eye what corruption what corruption the hadith says the sin of the eye of the eye is poisonous tell me if my friend or myself was to drink a bottle of poison what would happen everything inside would be poisoned and within a few minutes dead rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith anadhar sahmun masmum min siham iblis that this gaze is a poisonous arrow from the arrows of iblis you know when you shoot an arrow at someone you don't always hit the heart it hurts part of the body many times on the hand or on the thighs or legs or elsewhere the heart is covered by the armor so in those days what they used to do was they would uh, you know dip that arrow into poison and leave it for an overnight or a few days and the poison goes inside the metal and then they would shoot so even if it hit any part of the body it would still the poison would penetrate inside the blood stream and it would kill the person so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that this gaze is a poisonous arrow i mean you start gazing at the opposite gender whether it's male pornography or female pornography females look at males males look at females and then you develop this habit of images videos and uh, blue movies and you're on it on the computer you get addicted to it you see it once and then you want to watch more and more and more and more and more and then you're gone finish zeher lag gaya just as the zeher and the poison kills a person your ruhaniyat is killed off it's killed dead spirituality is dead then you don't feel anything you don't feel any good in namaz in sajda in ruku sajda in tilawat you don't feel like doing zikr that halawat of iman sweetness of iman is gone you just do something for the sake of it because your dad said it your mom said it so you do wuzu and you do ruku sajda but your mind is not there this is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a beautiful hadith if a person's gaze falls on a stranger stranger non mahram woman and he looks down tumma tumma astaghfirullah that was accidental nazar but he turned away la hawla wala quwwata illa billah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ahdatha allah lahu ibadatan yajidu halawataha fi sadrihi allah will give him tawfiq of such worship that he will feel the sweetness of that worship in his heart Do you understand? Because you controlled your gaze, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give you tawfiq to do such ibadat that you will feel the sweetness of that ibadat in your heart. Maybe one sajda or one tilawat recitation of Quran. You are in that sajda and you are saying Subhan Rabbi al Aala, Subhan Rabbi al Aala, Subhan Rabbi al Aala. you will feel that closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the halawat of iman sweetness of iman you will get that in your heart now ibn al qayyim rahmatullah li writes that if one asks a question that you know the eyes fell on that pretty woman but the person closed the eyes so the amal and the action was of the eyes So why is Allah giving the halawat and sweetness in the heart? So Ibn al-Qayyim says that because although the eyes closed but the bitterness was in the heart 
because the heart and the mind loves to watch and stare but he closed the eyes and the heart felt really bitter the mind felt some struggle on it that oh no to what we are dekhna chahiye tha itni achhi khoobsurat ladki thi na kyun nahi dekhne diya so the heart feels bad so because the heart felt that bitterness allah will give it that sweetness so you control your eyes and allah subhanahu wa taala gives you that halawat of iman sweetness of iman in the heart and hakim akhtar sa was a specialist in this field he quoted mulla ali qari rahmatullahi alayhi who said that this halawat is halawat of iman sweetness of iman he said it is allah's sunnat that when he gives someone a gift he doesn't take it back from him he lets him have it so when allah has given this person the halawat and sweetness of iman allah will let it remain with him in his heart with her in her heart because of that struggle now what will this do he will continue with his life when he is dying he will have that iman in his heart because allah didn't take it away from him so the closing of the eyes and lowering the gaze will result in this person dying with kalma and iman you see the effects you c- c- control your gaze and allah gives you that halawat sweetness of iman it stays in your heart for as long as you live and at the time of death that iman is with you you die with kalma and the believe me the greatest struggle in this day and age is dying with iman if we die with iman alhamdulillah otherwise there's so many fitnas out there attacking upon us and showering bombarding upon us and appeals and whatever allah toba toba don't know where the world is going to end up my friend from medina sharif today sent me a video clip he said bolana sahab look at this video clip and give me your view on it so i don't normally get time but i said let me look at this because it's from medina sharif and that video clip was about some masala of deen which is mujma alaiha consensus of all four imams and everyone on that now there is a you know debate forum and that this this you know girl who's not even proper hijab all you know make up shake up and long hair and everything open and half chest open as well and she is the host and there is this sheikh with a white rumal and another one and another one somewhere else doctor someone something and they are discussing on this masala and the person who is on the phone from elsewhere is doctor and he is saying that in this masala there is this only single hadith this is not mutawatir hadith so we can't uh, accept this masala and the doctor the sheikh is saying by this is mutawatir ma'nan and is narrated from so and so hadith from so and so hadith so and so hadith but the person is not ready to accept and he is winning the argument so i thought to myself allah i wrote back to him wa asafan ala ahbabin al arab rahimahum allah salasu malahida yuhajimuna ala shaykh wahid teen mulhid ek shaykh par hamla aur ho rahe hain aur hadith ko use kar rahe hain now the words of hadith you can misquote misuse them for whatever way you want so i said this is the problem of the you know the 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 wahabi sect the salafi sect who pick and choose words of hadith and say it's in hadith so i'm going to do it whereas hadith is hadith fiqh is main and if you just start picking hadith you're going to be misled you're going to go off track so you have to take fiqh and allah shower his immense rahma on imam abu hanifa's grave who saw this coming who saw that if st- people keep taking masla from hadith they're going to go astray so he researched and he he founded the principles and the usul and rules of deriving masail from quran and hadith and he he directed people's attention towards fiqh 
And Alhamdulillah, fiqh was established. He had the first fiqh academy in which he had 40 great ulama, huffaz quran muhaddisin, and who know the ijma of sahaba, aqwal of sahaba, and they used to debate, research, masail, base principles, and then Alhamdulillah, everything was established. And the ulama, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad, they followed later on. They had their own principles, and people accepted these schools of thought. So in this day and age, we should hold Hold on to these mazahib. We should not go into a hadith and pick and choose hadith. Otherwise, this is going to be the result. People are going to come up with hadith and this is the hadith. Finish full stop. I'm going to act on hadith. To the extent that some people go to say, now since we've touched this subject, I'll just mention this misal. Some people go on to say that if you sleep with the wife and you have sexual intercourse, but there is no ejaculation, then you don't need to do gusal. They say you just wash your private part, she washes hers, and that said you do wuzu and you can pray namaz. You don't need to do ghusl. And they say, where is this from? And they say, it's in the hadith. Hadith of Muslim. There are people who are saying this. Now they don't know that this hadith is mansukh. It's abrogated. Because he's only taken the one piece. And it was only in the beginning in the beginning, Rasulullah gave this flexibility, but later on, Rasulullah said, No. So you have to look at the whole collection of hadith. You can't just take one hadith from wherever you want. This is what these people are doing. And in that debate, that Sheikh was having a hard time, you know, uh, defending the deen and, you know, uh, 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 mentioning the right masala. And they were giving him a hard time. Similar like this masala. So you have to hold on to your mazhab, whatever your mazhab is. Hanafi, stay Hanafi. You are a Shafi, stay Shafi. Maliki, stay Maliki. Hanbali, you stay Hanbali. And always take masail from your school of thought and from your ulama, your mufti and kiram. Don't go into hadith and picking and choosing hadith from wherever you want to. So there are so many fitnas these days. Allah knows what's going to happen. So, and people who sometimes claim to know and they don't even uh, know how to pronounce the hadith properly. Also, people who don't even have knowledge. We hear of their cases. They're behaving the way they want to behave. Someone just told me that there are people who are keeping dogs in their houses. And they're playing around with the dogs. They're kissing the dogs as well. Now, this is what is happening. Allah, Toba, Toba, Toba. And when you ask them, they do dalil with you. That way, dog is also a creation of Allah and is more intelligent than many human beings. So it can understand me, I can talk to it, I can order it, that's what I do. So why can't I keep a dog? So this is their hujjat. Now, they don't know there is great wa'id for keeping a dog in your house. You can keep outside in the kennel if there is some need for it. There is flexibility for a person who has a huge mansion and he needs a dog for protection or for a sheep dog or for protection of the f farmland or the orchards or for hunting. So these types of dogs are permitted. But shawkhiya dogs, just for fun, are not, you're not allowed to keep them in your house. And you don't know that their saliva is napak, is najis. If it touches a, a, a utensil, then you have to wash it three times according to the Hanafi research. But according to Shafi research, you have to wash it seven times. And at the eighth time, you have to wash it with the soil. And then that, the, all the germs will go. This German doctor embraced Islam because of this hadith. He researched on this, that why did the Prophet ﷺ say that wash that utensil seven times and eighth time clean it with some soil as well. So he did research and he looked on the microscope into the vessel, you know, which dog had licked. And then he saw germs and he washed it and he saw germs, washed it and saw germs, bleached it, still germs. But then he put some earth and, you know, some uh, sand in it. And then he wiped it with that. And then he looked inside and the germs were gone. So he said, how did this person know 1400 years ago that the germs of this will be killed and the bacteria can only be killed with the earth? So uh, Rasulullah has said that, you know, don't keep dogs inside the house for fun. Shawkhiya dogs are not allowed. And people are keeping shawkhiya dogs for fun, just for shock. And the hadith says if a person keeps dog without necessity in the house, then from his a'mal saliha, maqbool a'mal, one qirat amal will be reduced every day. 
Every day that passes by, his a'mal are not increasing. One qirat is reducing from maqbool a'mal. From maqbool a'mal. So, there is wa'id for these types of things. Where do we get these things from? These habits you get from internet. You see this, you see that. And that's what happens. So, these are the effects of, you know, going on there. Another thing is mentioned is internet shopping addiction. People shop on the internet, they get this addiction and they just shop for fun. And many things they don't need and they just order and then they're doing nothing in the house and waste of money. Just because they felt it's a bit cheap, so let me buy it. They bought it and wasted money on it. So this is another effect of this. So, it also says on there that addiction on internet can also have physical discomfort, side effects, medical problems as well, such as CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome. Addiction can also cause backaches because you're always sitting on that chair and on the computer and your back is hurting. Now you have to go to the doctor, you have to go to the physiotherapist, he gives you some exercise and then you have to go, you know, you have to have, you, go, you have this problem. Severe headaches, eating irregularities, sleeping problems, failure to attend personal hygiene. All this happens due to internet addiction. Severe headaches, eating irregularities. A person who is addicted to internet doesn't eat properly. He can't eat properly. Because even when he sits down to eat, he's on the mobile. So even at, while eating, he's still looking on one side on the internet, on the mobile or whatever, WhatsApp, messages, everything. When, you, when it's time to eat, you just put, put your mobile phone away. Even if someone's call comes, just leave it. Call him later on. Whatever need eating time, you should be focused and eat slowly, digest food properly, and then you will eat properly, you will stay healthy as well. Also, failure to attend personal hygiene. It means, Peshab roki rakhwan. Peshab and you're running around, and then you're rushing. And somebody else is in the toilet and you're jumping up and down. So why did you stop your urine peshab and did not go to, you know, when you needed it? Peshab is something you should run straight away. Whenever you feel the need, you should go straight away to the, you know, toilet. Otherwise, many sicknesses can develop. Many sicknesses. The uterus can, you know, uh, get damaged and then uh, your urine stops after a certain age. You get some problem, prostrate problems. These types of problems happen because of withholding the urine and not going to pass water at the right time. This is why there was this Hakim Saab. And someone came and complained to him. Hakim Saab, aapka ladka bada besharam hai. Kya hua? Kya wo ghode pe baiat ke jaa raha tha. Aga wo pishap laga to ghode se utar kar wahi pe pishap shuru kar diya. Isne itna wait nahi kiya ke ghara kar ke latrine me jaye aur pishap kare. So Hakim Sahib said, yes, that's a big deal. Why did he go down the ground? He should go down the ground and go down the ground. Hakim Sahib, your son is very stupid. He needed to use the toilet and he just got off the horse and started urinating on one side. He should have waited to get home and then gone to the toilet. So Hakim Sahib said, yes, he's very stupid. Why did he come down from the horse? He should have urinated from the horse. He said, why did he use this much time to stop his urine? So urine, you should go immediately. When you're internet addicted, you don't uh, attend to your personal needs. Istinja la peshab, toilet lagi hai. You stop your toilet and then you get bowel problems. And then also you don't attend your personal hygiene. You don't shave your armpits properly, shave the navel hair properly. And maybe, you know, this could be one of the reasons many people keeping beard nowadays. They think it's coming to fashion. It's not, they're lazy, they don't want to shave it. They don't have time. It's good, Alhamdulillah, this would be the reason behind it because they're lazy. So, internet addiction has many, many side effects. How do we quit? First of all, many people who attempt to quit the internet experience some withdrawal symptoms, including anger, depression, Mood swings, anxiety, fear, sadness, 
loneliness, boredom, restlessness. So you have to remember, <coughs> if you want to quit the internet, if you want to quit your WhatsApp, whatever, you will go through these things. You will feel restless and uh, you, you won't want to give it up. Sometimes if it gets worse, you know, it could lead to depression type as well, anxiety, worry, bechani. So you will have to be ready for these types of things. If they come, you have to tackle them and you have to be strong. Don't be softy and uh, give in to the demands of your addiction. Just say, I'm going to control myself no matter what happens. Then, on the website it says, after you have identified and determined that you do have this problem of internet addiction, what you need to do is, need to see a counsellor. There are special counsellors for these types of things. You go, have a chat with them, I'm having this problem, can you please help me? And they are, since they have gone through this, they know the psychology of such addictions, like you know people have alcohol addiction, drug addiction, so this type of internet addiction, they've had many, many cases of these types. So they will look at your case, study it, and then they will give you some advices. And through those advices, you will be able to control yourselves. Then, number two, one of the main reasons for addiction is lack of limits and absence of accountability. One of the main reasons of addiction is lack of limits. So how do you control that? You set your limits. Right? You have your limits. I'm only going to use my internet for half an hour, one hour, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm only going to play this game and after that, finish. And if you exceed that limit, you have to punish yourself. That if I, if I exceed this, I'm going to punish my nafs by doing this. Maybe giving some sadqa, maybe praying a few rakat, nafil namaz, maybe, you know, reciting a little bit of Quran, maybe at least reciting astaghfar a few times, astaghfirullah, 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 11 times. Enough. Don't do it 12, 13, don't do it 9, 10. 11, exactly 11. And make this habit routine every time you, you cross the limit, which you set for yourself, you punish your nafs. That nafs, why did you cross the limit? I'm going to punish you now. So when you set limit upon yourself, then you'll start controlling yourself. So let's say, I'm only going to use my mobile till 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. After that, finish. I have some WhatsApp group of some friends. We've set a limit. After 10.30, nobody can post anything. And if somebody posts anything, he'll be kicked out. And to someone, someone did this, and someone sent something repeated, I immediately deleted them. But look, people who want to sleep, they have to go to work in the morning. Imam Sahib, he has to come to the masjid to lead Fajr Namaz. And you are sending messages at 12 o'clock at night, half 12, 1 o'clock, and disturbing them. So you have to have your limits. And if you cross that limit, you have to take the action. So set limits upon yourself that this is how much I'm going to use and after that full stop. And also absence of accountability. You know, make yourself accountable to someone, right? Like your dad or your mom, your elder brother and our seniors all should also, you know, uh, control the youngsters because they are young, they are naive. So if we don't set limits, you know, we should learn from these goriyas around us. They have limits. You know, the kids, they have to go to school in the morning, 8 o'clock, bedtime, go upstairs. No TV. Even if it's World Cup football match, they can't watch it. Tomorrow morning you have to go to school. I'll record it for you. You can view it tomorrow, 5 o'clock, but not now. So you have to have your principles. So in order to control your addiction, what you need to do is set your limits and make yourself accountable to someone. Controlled use is better than total abstinence. Okay, Remember this, controlled use is better than total abstinence. Because if you totally abstain from it, 
Then after a few days, you're going to go back. But if you control it, then slowly, slowly, you will be on track, online, and the addiction will go, and you will no longer be addicted to it. You will use it when you want to, and you will leave it when you want to leave it. This reminds me of our Hazrat. Hazrat used to eat pan a lot. Long time ago. So some mehman came and he said, Hazrat, you know, Ajkal kuch pan nazar nahi aare hai. So Hazrat said, Alhamdulillah, I have control over my pan. I eat when I want to and I leave it when I want to. So this helps me. While I'm here, pan is available, I take it. Even if I go to Makkah, Medina, pan is not available, I don't feel any problem with it. I don't struggle. Unlike others, you know, they have to hide their pan in the suitcase so Saudis don't catch it and they have to take it. Otherwise, they have a big problem. Other... So, uh, Hazrat said, Alhamdulillah, I have control over my pan. I am not addicted to it. So, you ha and this is with everything. You know, we in Zakaria Masjid, we used to have our, uh, in Madrasa, our, kya naam hai, unka wo aate te dekhne ke liye hamare, Daud bhai, Daud bhai Amirat. You bang on 4.15, 4.20, he is in Zakaria Masjid, Madrasa. Opening the Madrasa for the kids and welcoming all the kids. And then, you know, going through whatever the needs, fees or these people, kids want books or something like that. Everything, he is there every day. So, once he said, Maulana Saab, Alhamdulillah, I have been doing this khidmat for 25 years. And I like watching cricket. And sometimes there's a nice cricket match going on. Then I look at the watch, oh, it's four o'clock. So my nerves start struggling with me. I say, no, no, no. This is khidmat, even if it's a But I have to get there on time. I leave my favorite cricket match. No matter how much interested I am, I just close the TV and go to the masjid and do my job, which I need to do. This is how you control your nafs, your ego, control your addiction. Now, this is where the next subject comes. Managing your time, controlling your nafs, your shahwat, your desires. Managing time, time is our most precious asset. An Arabic poet says, Al waqtu anfasu ma unita bi hifzihi wa urahu ashala ma alayka yadi'u. Time is the most nafis and precious and qeemti thing that you have been told to look after. But I see that this is the easiestly lost uh, commodity of ours. We lose it very easily. You know, if you had diamonds, jewels, you know, and uh, gold and silver, you would look after it, protect it. You wouldn't lose it. Now time is more valuable than gold and silver, money, but still we are losing it. Hassan Basri rahmatullahi said, لَقَدْ أَدْرَقْتُ أَقْوَامًا أَقْوَامًا كَانُوا أَحْرَصَ عَلَىٰ أُقَاتِهِمْ مِنْ حِرْسِكُمْ عَلَىٰ الدَّرَاهِمْ وَالدَّنَانِيرِ I have met such people among the Sahaba, the one who was in the Sahaba, because he was a tabi'i. So he said, I have met Sahaba who were more careful and protective of their time than your being careful and protective of your gold and silver and your money and your property and wealth. They used to protect their money, money goes, go. I don't want it. I'm not going to waste my time behind it. And this was the habit of our Aslav. Our Hazrat Shaykh Maulana Zakaria Rahmatullahi Alayhi. In his very early age, very early age, Hazrat's father died and he was under a lot of stress and under a lot of loan, qarz. Because Hazrat's father had a small bookshop. And he used to publish book and he used to, you know, sell it at a very cheap price. And many times he would give free uh, hadiyas as well. So, Hazrat's father died and left a lot of loan behind. So, and Hazrat's wages from Madrasa Mazahir room was very minimal. Now, some of Hazrat's relatives in Kandla, where Hazrat's native beach is about 2-3 hours drive from Saharanpur in a car. So, over there they had some land, zameen, properties. Some solicitor came and he said, this is your property. You don't have to do anything. Just come with me to the court and sign some papers. I'll do everything and you'll get this zameen of millions. It'll be yours. And then you can pay off your debt and you can enjoy it. Hazrat said, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy over here. 
because he was teaching. So he said, I have to look after my lessons and I have to write some books. He was writing some books with Azhar Saran Puri Ramatullahi Bazrul Majood. He said, I don't have time. I'm too busy for all that. Hazrat didn't go. And that lakhon ki milkat in those days, which was worth hundreds of thousands, Hazrat said, my relatives can keep it. I'm not going to go to the courts. I'm not going to put a case against them and fight. I have to go many times repeatedly, sign this case, that case. I don't have time for all that ginger. He let all that go, hundreds of thousands. But he didn't waste his time. He said, this is more valuable for me. And today, we see Hazrat's books, Fazail-e Amal, his face spreading throughout the world. So, our salaf e salihin they were very, very careful about time. This is why, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes qasam of time in the Qur'an. Not once, twice, in many places. Wal-asr, inna al-insan lafi khusr. By the time, mankind are at a loss. Losing out. Why are they losing out? Because al-asr, Allah said qasam is of time. Because they're wasting time. Because of wasting time, they're losing out. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Except for people who do four things, who have iman and busy themselves in a'mal-e saliha and who encourage one another to hold on to haqq and encourage one another to do sabr and be patient. These people are gaining, all the others are losing out. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى إِنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَتَّى Allah takes custom of time. By the night, by the day, Allah Baq said. And by what Allah has created, male, female, Allah said, إِنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَتَّى Your efforts are of various types. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى The one who spends in the path of Allah, who has taqwa and piety, who is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who confirms and believes in al-husna, in life after death, in the beautiful jannat which Allah has prepared for people. وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We will slowly, slowly, gradually take him towards the easy path which leads to jannat. And as for a person who is stingy, miserly, and who is haughty and stays aloof, and mm, is stiff neck and high nose, then and who doesn't believe and denies Jannat and life after death, I don't believe in Jannat. Allah said, We will slowly, slowly take him to the hard path, that path which is leading to Jahannam. Na'uzu billah. So Allah took qasam of time and then said, إِنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَتَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ دَائِبَيْنِ وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Allah said, Allah subjugated, put into control and into orbit the sun and the moon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjugated the night and the day for you. The night and the day Allah gave us so that we can practice in them, work in them, do some good things. Allah said, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرُ Allah made the night and day follow one another. Why? Because if someone missed some a'mal of the night, he can make up for them in the day. If someone missed tahajjud, he can pray in the day. If someone missed some a'mal of the day, he can make up for them in the night. In the night, if so, he had a habit of doing some tilawa, zikr during the day, and he was in journey and restless, he can make it up at night before going to sleep. Hazrat Maulana Yaqub Desai Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Maulana Junaid Sahib's father, he had this habit. He had his ma'mulat. Once he went away for some suffer, when he returned back to Darulun because he used to stay there, everybody was tired going to sleep. Hazrat Maulana Yaqub Sahib sat down, read his Quran, his zikr, his ma'mulat, and then he went to sleep. He said, until I do these ma'amulat of mine, whatever I need to do, I can't rest. So Allah kept the night. So if you missed your day ma'amulat practices, you can do make up for them at night. Allah gave us night and day so that we can continuously practice and do amal and pray. This is why Allah gave us this time. Now people are not using it properly. And this is why our aslaf direct our attention towards it. Inna layla wa nahara ya'malan fi kafab fa'mal fihima. O oh, Ibn Adam, the night and day are working upon you. So you work on them. They are working on you, passing swiftly. Life 
is like a huge block of ice. On a sunny day, it's put outside into the, into the arena and it's slowly, slowly melting away. And before night falls, it's going to turn into water. Whole block of ice is going to melt. Similarly, our life is slowly, slowly melting away. It's melting away without us realizing that it's melting away. So before our life melts away and we go down under into the qabr, we need to utilize our time properly. Get rid of all these types of addictions. Whatever addiction we have, internet addiction, porn addiction, TV addiction, games addiction, football addiction, cricket addiction, whatever addiction, think carefully, manage your time, hold yourself accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get ready for your life after death. This is the message of today, of this you know, program of Valentine's Day. Don't fall into these bad habits. May Allah protect us. May Allah give us the ability to realize the value of time and to control our nafs, our ego, our desires. Remember what Allah said in Surah Al-Ahqaf. وَيَوْمَ يُعْرَضُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَلَى النَّارِ أَذْهَبْتُمْ طَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي حَيَاتِكُمُ الدُّنْيَا وَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهَا فَالْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَفْسُقُونَ When the disbelievers and deniers will be presented before fire and they will be going in there, they will be told أَذْهَبْتُمْ طَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي حَيَاتِكُمُ الدُّنْيَا You enjoyed all your pleasures and luxuries in the life of your dunya. You wanted everything there, you got it. أَذْهَبْتُمْ طَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي حَيَاتِكُمُ الدُّنْيَا Your طَيِّبَات, they were given to you in the dunya. اپنے ساری لگجری اور pleasure تم نے دنیا میں لے لیا ختم. وہاں سب لے کر کیا گئے. تمہیں وہاں چاہیے تھا ہم نے دے دیا تھا تم کو. وَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهَا Enjoy کر لیا. مزہ اڑا لیا. فائدہ اٹھا لیا. فَلْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونَ Since you took everything in the dunya, you didn't want anything here. This is what even in the time of Jahiliyyah when they used to come for hajj. You know what they used to say? Oh Allah, uh, give us money, give us children, give us this, give us business, give us job, give us that. So Allah Paak said, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ some hajis come and they say, Oh Allah, give us in this dunya. We want everything over here in this dunya. Allah said, مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ He will have no portion, no share in the hereafter. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَزَابَ النَّا This is the right dua. That oh Allah give us good in this dunya and give us good in the akhirat and save us from the fire of Jahannam. So this is what we should be doing. We should be striving for our akhirat. Our mind should be focused on hereafter, on akhirat. Working for it, striving for it, efforts, making effort for it. Not wasting time, not falling into these types of addictions. Do something constructive for this dunya and for akhirah. If you are studying, focus on your studies. If you are becoming a doctor, a lawyer, a barrister, engineer, then work hard and become a proper doctor, proper engineer. And then you can benefit yourself and benefit the community, benefit others as well. Mona Tariq Jamil Sahib was giving this bayan among some you know, university graduates who are becoming doctors, lawyers, barristers. And he said a very nice point. He said, you guys, you know, you are doing khidmat of makhluk out there. You've got so much opportunities to, you know, uh, 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 collect and gather good deeds which we don't have. We are mullahs, we are ulama, we sit and we go and speak. But people come to you and if some distressed person comes to you, then you help them. And you get their duas, their duas will shoot you up high above into the jannat. Some old lady comes to the doctor and he doesn't charge her. He said, this old lady, give her. And she makes dua for that person. Some old lady, someone who is in distress, come to a solicitor, a lawyer. And he, he, says, he says that you can't afford the fees. I'll help you, I'll pay you. There are many solicitors out there who don't charge, you know, such poor people who help them and do something for the sake of Allah. So he said, you graduates, you, are, you know, you've got opportunity to take du'as of these needy people who are in distress, who are in problems, help them, support them, take care of them. And their du'as will take you high up, up there into Jannah, which you can take, we can't do. Because we are doing here, we can't have that opportunity. So if you are doing a degree, you are doing some good job, mashallah, very good. And you know, progress and be a good person, be the best person in your field. 
So you can get the good of this dunya and of the hereafter. And don't fall for these, you know, small, small addictions and here and there and these things. This is the message of today. May Allah give me the tawfiq to practice on what I said. I could also be addicted to the internet. I also needed this bayan. Allah give me the tawfiq to uh, restrain myself and control myself properly as well. I can, you know, make excuses. Oh, I use it for dini purpose and but no, that's not right. The nafs is there. The nafs is there. It, you know, we have to control ourselves. Stop wasting time. Don't waste too much time on there. What you need to do, you have to do. Your parents, you have to do their khidmat. Your family, your wife, your kids, you have to fulfill their hukuk, their right. We have to do that. And uh, inshallah, Allah will give us tawfiq. Allah will accept. Us baat hogi, but dua kar le. Ab dua kar lo. Duru shir par lo dua kar lete. Subhanak Allahumma, bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukru. Allahumma la nuhsui thana'an alayk. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين اللهم بارك لنا في أسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا وأرزاقنا وأوقاتنا وأعمارنا اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا خواتيمها وخير أعمالنا أواخرها وخير أيامنا يوم نلقاك فيه يا ولي الإسلام وأهله ثبتنا به حتى نلقاك اللهم ثبتنا على الإيمان وأمتنا على الإيمان وعشرنا يوم القيامة مع المتقين مع الإيمان اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين وجعلنا من الفائزين المهديين وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين اللهم إنا نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب المساكين وأن تغفر لنا وترحمنا وإذا أردت بعبادك فتنة فتوفنا غير مفتونين يا رحم الراحمين محز ابن فضل وكرم سيهم سب کی مغفرت فرما دیجئے يا الله پوری امت کی مغفرت فرما دیجئے پوری امت پر رحم کر دیجئے کرم کر دیجئے معاف کر دیجئے عفو اور صفا عافیت برکت نصیب فرمائیے امت جہاں کہیں مظلوم ہے ظلم سے نجات عطا فرمائیے ظلم کا خاتمہ فرمائیے پوری دنیا میں امن چین سکون پیس والی فضا قائم فرمائیے یا اللہ ہدایت کی ہواوں کو عام فرمائیے مسلمان کو بھی ہدایت نصیب فرمائیے غیر مسلم کو بھی ہدایت نصیب فرمائیے یا اللہ مسلمان کو آپ کے پاس آنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے نماز احتمام سے پڑھنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے ذکر فکر تسبیح تلاوت کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے فسق اور فجور کفر اور شرک سے حفاظت فرمائیے یا اللہ غفلت سے بچائیے یا اللہ شکر کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ آپ کے ساتھ ہمارا ایک کانٹرکٹ اگریمنٹ ہے یا اس اگریمنٹ کو پورا کرنے کی توفیق دیجئے ہم آپ کی اطاعت کریں گے اور آپ ہمیں جنت نصیب کریں گے یا اللہ ہمیں آپ کی اطاعت فرما برداری کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ آپ کے احکام کی پوری پوری پابندی کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے ٹائم ویسٹ کرنے سے حفاظت فرمائیے اڈکشن سے بچائیے یا اللہ ہر قسم کی اڈکشن سے ہمیں نجات عطا فرمائیے اور یا اللہ ہمیں اپنی زندگی کی قدر کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے اس کا ویلیو سمجھنے اور ریالائز کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے ہمارے اس پروگرام کو قبول فرمائیے جنہوں نے رینج کیا سب کو جزائے خیر عطا فرمائیے جنہوں نے شرکت کی سب کو جزائے خیر عطا فرمائیے سب کو مفید بنائیے سب کے لیے مفید بنائیے سب سے پہلے کہنے والے کو فائدہ پہنچائیے پھر سننے والوں کو فائدہ پہنچائیے جہاں کہیں انٹرنیٹ پر جو کوئی سن رہا ہے یا اللہ سب کو یا اللہ سب کے لیے اس کو مفید بنائیے اور ہمیں یہ انٹرنیٹ کی جو ٹول ہیں اس کو بھی کار خیر میں استعمال کرنے کی توفیق دیجئے اور ہر قسم کی شر سے بچائیے پورنوگرافی سے بچائیے اللہ آنکھوں کے گناہ سے بچائیے زنا سے بچائیے اور ہر قسم کی اللہ بری عادتوں سے بچائیے اور ہر قسم کی اللہ غلط سلر فلموں کو دیکھنے سے بچائیے اللہ ہماری آنکھوں کی حفاظت فرمائیے ہماری آنکھوں کے پچھلے گناہوں کو معاف فرمائیے ہماری آنکھوں میں حیا اور شرم اور ماڈسٹی نصیب فرمائیے بے حیائی اور بے شرمی کی حرکتوں سے ہماری 
بھی حفاظت فرمائیے اور ہماری بیوی بی بچوں کی بھی حفاظت فرمائیے ہماری اولاد اور ہمارے نسلوں کی حفاظت فرمائیے یا اللہ اس ملک کے باشندوں کو سمجھ عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ ان کو سمجھ عطا فرمائیے ہر قسم کی اس طرح کی خطرناک مضر چیزوں سے یا اللہ ان کی بھی حفاظت فرمائیے نفسانیت کو ختم فرمائیے شیطنت کو ختم فرمائیے ایمان اور اخلاص اور لاہیت کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ ہماری ٹوٹی پھوٹی دعائیں سن لیجیے ہر خیر اور برکت سے ہم سب کو مالا مال فرمائیے ہر شر اور برائی مصیبت بیماری پرابلم آفت سے ہم سب کی حفاظت فرمائیے حاضرین مجلس شرکاء دعا میں سے جس کے دل میں جو جائز مقصد ہے نیک تمنا ہے تمام جائز مقاصد میں کامیابی نصیب فرمائیے دنیا اور آخرت کی ہر خیر ہم سب کو نصیب فرمائیے ہر شر اور برائی سے ہم سب کی حفاظت فرمائیے ربنا تقبل منا ان کا اند سمیع العلیم و تب علینا یا مولانا ان کا اند تواب الرحیم و صلی اللہ وسلم علی سیدنا محمد والی و صحابی اجمعین برحمت کیا رحم الرحیم